CSCS Health and Safety Test, 15 questions. Question 1. What should you do if the guard from a power tool need to use is missing? A. Improvise and make your own. B. Carry on using it but be very careful and work very slowly. C. Use the tool as fast as you can to complete the task quickly. D. Do not use the tool unless you get the correct guard fitted. Question 1 Answer D. Do not use the tool unless you get the correct guard fitted. Question 2 If you need to operate a power tool you must be A. Trained and competent B. At least 16 years old C. At least 18 years old D. At least 21 years old Question 2 Answer A. Trained and competent Question 3. What should you do if the extension wire you need to use has a cut in the outer cover? A. If you can't see the copper wires inside then carry on using it. B. Use electrical tape to cover it and then carry on working. C. Report it immediately and make sure no one else uses it. D. Carry on using it but avoid going near the cut part. Question 3 Answer C. Report it immediately and make sure no one else uses it. Question 4. Which of these must you do if you are required to use an extension cable? Choose two answers. A. You must only uncoil the length you need to use. B. You must uncoil the entire cable. C. Check the entire length and cable connectors for damage. D. You must only check the length you need for damage. Question 4 Answer B. You must uncoil the entire cable. C. Check the entire length and cable connectors for damage. Question 5. Which of these must you do if you need to run an electrical cable across an area used by vehicles? Choose two answers. A. Ensure that you use yellow tape to wrap it as this would make it visible to drivers. B. Use spare wood or scaffold boards to cover the cable. C. Use a protective ramp to cover the cable. D. Put up a ramp ahead sign. Question 5 Answer C. Use a protective ramp to cover the cable. D. Put up a ramp ahead sign. Question 6 What should you do if you are required to work in an area that has exposed electrical cable? A. Touch it quickly to ensure that it's not live. B. If there are no sparks coming from the cable then it's safe to assume that it's not live. C. Move the cable out of your path and carry on working. D. Do not go near the cable and report to your supervisor immediately. Question 6 Answer D. Do not go near the cable and report to your supervisor immediately. Question 7. What two things can you do can you do to help prevent slips and trips while using an extension cable? A. Run the cables and leads in the middle of the room so it can be visible to everyone. B. Run the cables and leads close to the wall. C. Run the cables and leads above head height over doorways and walkways. D. Tie up excess cables and leads into a very small coil. Question 7 Answer B. Run the cables and leads close to the wall. C. Run the cables and leads above head height over doorways and walkways. Question 8. Why must you be fully trained before using a cartridge-operated tool? A. Because they're very heavy and can cause injuries if you lift them incorrectly. B. They can be dangerous to an inexperienced person because they operate like a gun. C. If you use it incorrectly it can cause dermatitis. D. It has many exposed electrical parts. Question 8 Answer B. They can be dangerous to an inexperienced person because they operate like a gun. Question 9. When should you check your tools and equipment for damage? A. At least once a month. B. At least once every three months. C. At least once every six months. D. It should always be checked before you use it. Question 9 Answer D. 
It should always be checked before you use it. Question 10. Why should you use a RCD with 230 volt tools? A. Because it reduces energy consumption and lowers cost. B. Because it cuts off the power quickly if there's a fault. C. It allows the tools to run at a safe speed. D. It allows the tools run at a higher speed. Question 10 Answer B. Because it cuts off the power quickly if there's a fault. Question 11. To check if a RCD connected to a power tool is working you should A. Press the test button on the RCD. B. Try running the tool at top speed to see if it cuts out. C. Switch the tool on and off. D. Switch the power on and off. Question 11 Answer A. Press the test button on the RCD. Question 12. What does the portable appliance testing pad label on a power tool tell you? Choose two answers. A. The year the tool was manufactured. B. The date the next safety check is due. C. The company the tool belongs to. D. The previous date the tool was tested. Question 12 Answer B. The date the next safety check is due. D. The previous date the tool was tested. Question 13. What is the recommended safe voltage for electrical equipment on a building site? A. 5.5 volts. B. 9 volts. C. 12 volts. D. 110 volts. E. 230 volts. Question 13 Answer D. 110 volts. Question 14. What should the color of a 110 volt power cable and connector be? A. Green. B. Yellow. C. Red. D. Black. Question 14 Answer B. Yellow. Question 15. Why is it that building sites use 110 volt instead of the regular 230 volt domestic supply? A. Mainly because it is a lot cheaper. B. Because it's less likely to kill you. C. It has less impact on the environment. D. Most power tools are designed for 110 volt only. Question 15 Answer. B. Because it's less likely to kill you.